Hello everybody, you are watching the extended cut of this video. This means it includes gameplay testing, so it will be a little longer. If you just want to watch the concept and the build idea and the conclusion, you can watch the normal cut, which was also released today. That will be linked. Thank you. Hello everybody. Welcome to what is a build that I thought I would never be featuring on the channel, which is a two-handed flail build. In the most recent update of Battle Brothers, they buffed two-handed flails and made them not bad. Previously, two-handed flails were basically objectively the worst two-handed weapon for late game use because they're low damage coupled with low armor damage and not that high pen meant that you basically didn't ever want to use them compared to other weapons. And their second ability, Thresh, is awful because it's a, the round swing and it's very hard to use, has a low hit chance, and does basically no damage at all. Um, but with Of Flesh and Faith, they buffed two-handed flails. They buffed their damage from 40 to 80 to 45 to 90. They gave hits to the head, ignore an additional 20% chance of armor, 10% because of the weapon, and 10% because of flail mastery. So now if you actually want to use Flail Mastery, that's something you can do. Um, they also buffed the Wooden 200 Flail. Not that you care about that unless you're on a Cultist run on day one. And they buffed the Berserker Chain to uh, 50 to 100 damage as opposed to 40 to 100 damage. So the average damage of the Berserker Chain has gone up. I think the Berserker Chain is more of a meme now than before. I, I think the regular 200 Flail is better um especially when you get some named variants so let's take a look at the build that i'm thinking of right now so what is the two-handed flail build compared to well it's obviously compared to other two-handed weapon builds be that the axe the, the two-handed mace the two-handed hammer the two-handed sword um and there's a lot of variations within those there's like the quick hands reach weapons there's uh, Berserk Killing Frenzy builds, there are Stam Neutral builds. Um, so I was thinking, like, how am I trying to capitalize on the two-handed flail? Well, also with Of Flesh and Faith came a Headhunter buff. Headhunter. Now, um, oh, it doesn't say so. Oh, okay, never mind. I think it says so on Tooltip is maybe right. Um, before Headhunter used to uh, lose its stack if you missed the attack, but now it keeps it. So you proc Headhunter by hitting the head, and then you'll keep the Headhunter stack until you actually hit the head a second time, which is huge, because it improves the consistency of Headhunter um, basically, basically infinitely. Like, you never have to worry about misses ever again, um, and it makes Headhunter a much more viable perk than it was before. I think Headhunter was already like questionably good, um, but now I think it's just a really good perk for a lot of builds. But I want to try and use it for the two-handed flail because we remember that the two-handed flail ignores 20% more armor on hits of the head. And the two-handed flail um, can get plus head hit chance uh, on, a na on its uh, named variants. So this is a way we can maximize using Headhunter um, and traits like Brute. So I thought, would I want to use a Stam neutral build? A Stam Neutral build, for those who don't know, is a build that recovers 15 Stam at the start of every turn, like every single brother does, but this build never accumulates more than 15 Stam per turn. So with Pathfinder, you can walk and spend 3 AP on like every single tile except for Swamp. So barring Swamp, um, you can move one, and then you still have your 6 AP to attack with your two-handed weapon. So you can always move once and attack. Uh, means you you miss out on perks like rotate you miss out on perks like indom and uh, like uh, Berserk because you're never gonna get more stam to swing twice um, You can keep killing frenzy, but a lot of those are like um, You know reach advantage isn't so good because you're only really swinging once um, uh, I don't know there's some other like footwork. I guess you can use footwork but the two handed flail suffers and it can't actually be a stam neutral build so if i was going to do it this is what it would look like but this is a really bad build because what you can do let's say you have like a hammer just hypothetically what you do is you pick the hammer and then you take quick hands so 
you move one hit. Oh, wait, what if you can't hit with your two-handed hammer? Well, you quick switch, and then you have the pull hammer, which is under the same mastery. And thus, you can do that, and you can actually have an effective reach of two tiles every single turn. Um, or I guess, I guess three tiles is what it would be. Um, so same thing with the axe, same thing with the mace. Um, alternatively, you could use pole arms and then just not have a spec on your regular weapon if you have like a minus fat axe on use. Or minus fat on use axe. But there's no pole flail. The Like the long flail does not exist. So you can't do this. Like you could, but it would just be bad. It would be objectively worse than just using a... The whole point is that you can like hit from two tiles away with the reach weapon. So you would never make a stam neutral flail build. So you have to go stam intensive, which uh, just means that you're using more stam than you recover. Like almost every build in the game is stam intensive. That's not like some weird term. That's just the way I'm calling it. So I've thought of two builds for how to make the two handed flail actually good. So let's look at this first one here. So. We start with Colossus to give us uh, more HP. That's just good. You're almost always taking Colossus. Okay. Then um, you want Flail Spec. Of course we want Flail Spec. And of course we want Headhunter. So those are easy builds right there. <clears throat> because we're going Stam Intensive, we're going to want Berserk. We don't want Stam Neutral. Thus, we want to use Berserk. Because we have to go Stam Intensive. Otherwise, you would just use like a hammer or an axe or a, or a mace. So you have to go Berserk. Going Berserk means you want to go Killing Frenzy. And Killing Frenzy is also really good in this build because you're maximizing the amount of damage you can do. So I think this is good. We're a damage dealing build, so we want to go Fearsome. There are at length discussions in the Battle Brothers community about why Fearsome is amazing. Um, shorthand, imagine if every time you hit somebody, or at least 50% of the time you hit somebody, you dropped their... Um, melee attack by 10%, their melee defense by 10%. Like, you debuff them. It's like overwhelm, but with hit chance. Um, and damage. And defense as well. So it's better overwhelm, right? Isn't that cool? Okay, well that's what's called a morale break. When you go breaking, and then wavering, and then fleeing. That's what happens to you. So this is why Fearsome is good. Awesome. Cool. So then, um, I'm gonna go Pathfinder. Because I don't want to go recover. I still want to be able to move one and attack on every single turn. Even because if I run out of stam because I'm berserking and frenzying too much, I can still fall back on this. So I want to have Pathfinder. Okay. So, underdog, questionable, good choice. But I'm thinking head hits. You do a lot of damn damage on the head. Not a lot of things have heavy head armor. So, what if you proc injuries on the head hits? You probably do proc injuries. In fact, I've tested it and you do proc injuries, like broken nose or whatever. You'll proc that against Chosen. Um, you can proc that against Orc Warriors, maybe. Anything anything less than an Orc Warrior, you will certainly injure um, on a head hit. So, you won't one-shot them, though. So, you won't one-shot them, but you'll injure them. So, an enemy will be injured. Thus, we want Executioner. Because Executioner, when you if you head hit them, and then you are guaranteed to head hit them again, and you get plus 20% damage because you broke their nose the first hit, you just fucking smack them. Awesome. You could even go crippling strikes. Um, and crippling strikes is to make maybe you get the better injuries, like maybe instead of broken nose, you get crushed windpipe or or, or concussion. Because what we're at, you can actually do is kind of almost farm getting severe concussions. Severe concussions, along with broken skull, are the worst injuries in the game. You get minus fifty percent to all your stats, maybe except for like resolve and hit points. Um, but you can't you can't attack shit you can't defend against shit you're totally useless 50 percent to everything so if you can proc broken skull on an enemy that effectively makes them useless it doesn't mean you're not going to kill them i wouldn't necessarily leave them alive but it does take them out of the fight for the next turn the additionally the two-handed flail has a chance to stun so you could also injure these guys and like stun them for a lot of enemies that are not stun immune um so Crippling Strikes is an arguable choice right here. I think you can take off Crippling Strikes and take Underdog. Um, underdog, if you like um, doing that, you know, just why you would want Underdog normally. Uh, additionally, you could take Dodge. Dodge is not a bad perk. Um, you could take Gifted 
as well. I think those would be the, the perks I would take. I don't think I don't think fortified mind is that great, but um, you could. So in terms of battle forge or nimble, you could definitely go nimble. Um, that would probably benefit more from like dodge, but maybe not. Um, nimble is good because it means you can be more stam intensive without having to put more points into stam. You know what I mean? Um, you could also go battle forged. Battle forged if you have like lots of stam. Um, you know, you have like a triple, like a double star stam dude or something, uh, with brute, then maybe this is your build. If you have a lot of stam, maybe you can wear like light battle forged armor. Um, some of the oath, new oath takers armor is really good for, uh, the stam to armor ratio it is very strong. So you could go battle forged, uh, or you can use light armor padding. So I think it's kind of independent, which one you do. Um, you could, you could do this and then go brawny. Although I feel like it's probably better to go Battle Forge and then take like a light Battle Forge and keep crippling strikes, or you can just do Nimble that way. So alternatively, the second build idea I have is to drop that last perk. You can still have Battle Forge and Nimble as we said, but you drop crippling strikes and you take Adrenaline. Now this I think benefits more from Nimble because you're going to require a lot more stamina to do this and thus when you have less armor weighing you down nimble um you can you have more stam left alternatively though if you have if you have like a bajillion stam just go battle forge same thing as before um then you'll be fine but why would i want adrenaline so you hit somebody with headhunter and you proc headhunter so the next hit is going to ultra smack somebody in the head so what if you just go first next round if you go first you basically take somebody and wipe the floor with them because you're um, going to smack them in the head because you have the headhunter proc. So if you hit somebody once and then you hit them again with your adrenaline hit, um, they've lost almost all their HP if they're not already dead. Um, but you could hit somebody else and then you can maybe get like a broken skull on them or something like that, which could, uh, or stun them as well. So... There's also the other point of um, a 30% chance to stun, which isn't great. I wouldn't necessarily roll on that. But adrenaline is useful in other situations. Like, there's just the normal situations where adrenaline is useful. But when you're guaranteeing, like, the, you know, the wrath of God with your headhunter flail hit here, that's even more strong. So that is a different build that I'm thinking. So I'm thinking, you it's basically, it's the same build. Either take, like, adrenaline... Or I'm thinking maybe take crippling strikes. Underdog is certainly good. Underdog would probably be the third one. Um, if you don't want to go adrenaline, I think you should maybe go underdog or crippling strikes. You could maybe do that. I don't think dodge is that worth it. Maybe go nimble. Um, but this is the general build idea of what we're looking for right now. Alright, so I've done some testing um, first off. And to see how these builds work. These uh, first... This first image right here is what I did with some good named weapons. They weren't great. They were good. Like, um, not max rolls, but useful stats. So the first one, uh, the first two are actually are with a named flail, which had, uh, I think it was plus ignore and a little bit of plus, uh, plus head chance or is pl plus ignore and, and minus fatigue. So it's okay. Um, first hit, um, head hit on an armored frost unhold actually did a little bit of HP damage. I know it says unharmed. That's because, um, it regened, but it did like one HP damage. It said, um, but it actually, that's, that's pretty impressive, uh, to do that. The second hit hit it again with killing frenzy as well. Um, means it did a sizable amount. That's like, that's half of the, the armor. But the flail is mostly ignoring and doing that much damage. Um, with well, the 200 flail is kind of impressive. Uh, in comparison, we have one hit from an axe, which had maybe like uh, five to eight percent of the body armor already taken out by like a dagger or something. But this is uh, this is pretty good. Maybe the the body armor would go up to the end of the E or maybe the D, and probably more like the end of the D is what that would go up to. Next, I took some tests against Chosen with normal weapons. So a normal great axe and a normal two-handed flail, no famed anything. Because that means, like, how good is this build 
comparison to a two-handed axe when you're not playing with shit like, you know, like named weapons and whatever. I uh, wanted to be note noted that this two-handed flail build comes with brute, so that's 15% extra damage on a head hit. Now, is that kind of cheating? I don't really think so. Um, I'm not. I'm not claiming this flail build is the best damn thing in the game, and every frontliner you're ever gonna make is gonna be a flail. But if you have brute, like if you already have a guy with brute, um, this could be a viable build. Same thing with my flail. Uh, Axe Headhunter Duelist that I made uh, about a year ago. That build, um, yeah, it's a cool duelist. It's a very cool build, but it's probably best when you just have it all kind of lined up with like melee attack stars and, and brute. So, one hit against a mixed chosen. A mixed chosen is um, like a, either a light, uh, this guy had a light helmet and a heavy body armor. There are multiple, like, there's, uh, like, a chosen of, like, a 160 to, like, a 230 type of helm, and then, like, 180 to, like, 250 armor, or something like that. So, uh, and that actually does depend, change how much damage is done. So, I've wrote, written it out here. Um, so, it's a mixed helmet, a mixed chosen for this 200 axe, which did about 40% HP damage and about half armor damage. Now, if we take a look at the body hit, the first body hit against the... Heavy Chosen, which is the heavy armor, I think maybe it's 230 or 210, I don't remember, or maybe it's 250, I don't remember. But that did nothing. That's a that's a pretty terrible hit. That's probably comparable to um like a bill hook or a or maybe a one-handed uh one-handed weapon with a shield. Now that's a that's really bad. That is very much worse than the two-handed axe. That's the two-handed flail we all know and hate. If you hit him a second time, it's still about as good as the axe was in one hit, um, hitting the same body and head. We did stun him, you can see. So that's cool, at least. We did get a stun off. Um, and then the third hit, um, when we hit the head, basically nuked the guy. Um, we got a heavy head injury, crushed windpipe, and then we brought him down to, like, you know, one HP. So, hitting, this is all the same guy. Hitting him on the head did a whole lot more um, than the axe did. If you look at the bottom, we have a light chosen, which um, in this case means they had light head armor because we're only hitting the head. So that's the body armor could be 6,000, but you're hitting the head. So it doesn't matter. So it's like 160 helm, I think is what it is. Um, we smacked the fuck out of this guy. Look at this. This is like 30% HP left, 25% HP left. This guy got rocked uh, by the 200 flail. And then I tried it again on a different guy. This time with Killing Friends, yeah, I must have killed the first guy at this point. Um, I did about the same. Remember, the game has damage rolls. Um, so maybe the first time I rolled high and the second time I rolled low. I imagine I must have rolled, like, really low um, on this second guy. Because with Killing Frenzy, which is a 25% buff, I did less damage. Um, so, hey, the, like, that shit happens. But either way, we got a Fractured Skull. So we basically took this enemy out of the game. Um, and we stunned him. So this guy got totally, totally rocked. Um, and you can see all these head hits. This is actually uh, about a little bit better than the axe. This axe took about like three hits, two, two, and then uh, two and a little bit of hits to kill the chosen. Like I think if somebody else hit this chosen in between, you could probably kill with two hits in the axe. But if you hit one head hit on a chosen and you hit him again with because you have headhunter, um, you're gonna two shot him like every time. And that's what I found, is you can two-shot headshot anybody in the game except for, like, Lindworms, Unholds, and, uh, and, like, maybe Orc Warriors. I don't, I don't quite remember Orc Warriors. But, and even if you don't kill them, they're, they're, they're like this guy on the top right with, like, one HP left. So, that's pretty good, and that's why the Adrenaline build, I think, is a good idea, or at least worth looking at, because you can two-shot anybody... So you just go first and then two shot them before they get another turn. Nimble dudes, um, you actually that's right, you won't you won't two shot nimble dudes. Um but you won't hit two hunt two hit him with an axe either. So I think that's kind of okay. Next, I took some beast weapons. So these are like a, this is like a ma a near max roll axe. I think it was um I did like 100, 125 uh damage when max is like 104, 127 or something like that. Um did like fifty percent Ignore, max is 56. 
Uh, this hammer is like 90, is like 70 something to 110 one something, 61% ignore. And this flail um, is 40%, it's same damage, same base damage. But it's 40% uh, ignore when a max ignore is 46, and it's plus 30% head hit chance when the max is plus 35. So this is like the 95% best uh, weapons you could get for an axe, a hammer, and a flail. So kind of unrealistic, but this is what we're this is just what we're looking at. Like what could we possibly see? Like if you get this max roll, how good is it? Now the two-handed axe, um did about the same I think that I don't remember what kind of chosen that was I think it was a heavy chosen um I didn't check but he did about half damage um so that's really good like you can two shot I've used an axe kind of like this before actually um you can one shot like footman um there's videos of me using that axe like one shotting footman basically so this this kind of axe is like one of the best weapons in the game the hammer is really good the, let's look at the second one first. The second one broke a Light Chosen's um, body armor and then did half HP damage. So that's pretty good. Um, like that—that that is really good. The one, the hammer would never one shot though. It doesn't do enough damage to like actually just one shot you, but it'll wreck all of your armor. The first hit though, that's really interesting. Head hit. I don't remember what kind of uh, helmet it had, but it was god anyway. Um, so you break the helmet, give him a concussion, and bring him down to about like one HP so now if we look on this first one for the flail you can see a similar story severe concussion kept the head armor and then had the same HP I think that HP difference is a little bit insignificant um no I wouldn't say that it's a, it's it's kind of significant the for the the flail the flail will still two shot this guy and the hammer will still two shot him but um other weapons might not like because that guy still has the head armor Whereas with the hammer, they just totally rocked the the head armor off. So if anyone hits that guy in the head with the hammer, the dude that got hit by the hammer, they're going to die. Um, whereas this other Chosen might still make it because they just have a dented helmet at this point. Um, and they'll probably live on body armor. Whereas the other Chosen who got hit by the hammer might not. Um, so with Killing Frenzy, though, we have to see a, a kind of a similar story. Um, where it's a heavy Chosen head. So this is heavier armor, but we have Killing Frenzy, and again, it's on damage rolls. Um, so we brought that guy down to about the same HP as the hammer hit we're talking about. But again, the head armor is still there, which means this Chosen is more likely to live than the one that got hit by the hammer because they still have that head armor protecting them. It won't save them from like another axe or another big two-hander hit or a duelist hit, but um, weaker weapons might not kill him and you won't just you're not just rolling on do i hit the head and auto kill the guy um and then finally on the right we have thresh thresh is the aoe attack which loses 20 damage um so instead of uh 65 to uh what is it 65 to 115 you just do the 45 to 95 or 45 to 90 sorry um and so with killing frenzy I threshed, hit the head, still caused a severe concussion because I had um, crippling strikes. And I wouldn't do that without crippling, crippling strikes because that is not half HP damage. So that's a good time to use crippling strikes right there, you can see. Um, so I did half HP damage on a head hit, and I hit the other guy too. Uh, I hit two Chosen with this, and they both were at basically the same uh, HP and armor uh, uh, after the hit. And that's really strong. That's two concussions right there. One of the guys got stunned. Um, so do I like using Thresh? Not really. I don't know if Thresh is that good. Um, but you're doing a lot of damage with Headhunter. Um, if you're head hitting a lot of guys, that's kind of useful. I still don't like it that much, but it's something. I want to thank King D DZ, who is a viewer, who has um, he sent me a save file. This is the one from my Dov Cole viewer challenge. Um, and because he, I know he has a late game lone wolf company with a lot of camps that I can just test with. Um, he just like all these things I can, I can play around with. Um, he also had a flail. Um, but then I ended up downloading BB edit anyway to just test with stuff. Um, so I'm like not quite cheating. Um, but I, cause I think I'm, I'm giving this guy like 130 
Uh, I need to change that actually. But I'm giving these dudes like high stats and the perks I need. But that's only to facilitate testing in my real life time. Um, so it shouldn't change that much. But we're actually going to change uh, two things. We're going to make this guy. This is the lone wolf axe we're going to compare it to. He has 90. Uh, 90 melee attack. And then we're going to change the flail to also have 90 melee attack. Um, and we should be good. I don't really care about the defense. Uh, that does, I don't think that's really relevant. Um, because we're just testing how much damage we can do. And like the kind of effects we can see. So the, this is the god flail right here that we can look at. But I'm going to just use the regular two-handed flail. And the regular two-handed axe. Um, and then we're going, to get a, we're going to attack this noble company right here. And we're just looking at what kind of um, damage and hit chances we can expect to see. Because the flail, we should remember, ignores the bonus granted by shields. So orc warriors wield shields. Footmen wield shields. Conscripts wield shields. Ancient undead wield shields. The hit chances are actually quite relevant. Alright. So this guy um, is overwhelmed a little bit. So he's got 81. So that's my bet. I uh, can't really avoid that. So 61 to hit his Y-hander. Um, and 26 to hit a shield walling footman. Um, so if we add 10% to... If we add 9 melee skill to that. Um, because we should be at 90. Uh, we would have a 35% chance to hit. And we would have a 70. So 70 and 35. Let's... Um, Let's just roll on this Y-hander here. Okay. Good hit, good hit. And here we have 57. So 57 versus 35. That's plus 22% chance to hit. Um, because we are ignoring shield wall. We're not ignoring shield wall, sorry, we are ignoring the shield. Um, and then we have a 70% chance to hit here. So again, look, same chance to hit on this Y-hander. But we go up to 57 to hit the footman. So, hmm. Um, HP is similar. I'd say that's statistically insignificant. On a body hit, still a 56 to hit here. We have 81. Um, because he has a reach advantage. Okay. Still a 26, uh, 28. So let's see. Yeah, so we can one shot. Oh, we go to confident. So we have 89. So that's about where we should be. Um, 34 versus 39. We can try and hit this one, although we might not do it. Oh, we did. Okay. So with Killing Frenzy, um, we almost one-shot uh, this footman here. So, that, But that was a 39. We should have been a 40. So should have had a 40% chance to hit that, assuming no modifiers. <laughs> So we two hit him. Um, so we do break his skull. Um, we don't quite kill him though. All right. So this is the hit. This is the hit we were gonna get on this dude. The axe virtually one shot this guy. So let's see what we get here on the flail. We did actually one shot him with the flail. I think that's because he has the weaker head armor. Because we have the eighty the eighty headgear. Um. Yeah. We just totally totally wrecked that guy. Alrighty, so we're looking at some orc testing with the normal flail. One hit against a warrior did jack shit against the body, which we do kind of expect, which means this is going to be way worse against the warrior um, in this way. Even two hits against the orc warrior body isn't doing a whole lot. Alright, we can see what a third hit might do to a guy. Even three hits um, with the tuna flail is still... That's... I mean, it's hard to say compared to um, an axe, because the axe would have done head armor at this point. But we can see that consistently not getting head hits is not that good for uh, this type of build right here. Which is why we need to benefit from named item plus head chance um, things. Alright, so we have a full health warrior right here that we can hit with an axe. Um, that was okay. The head armor is clearly weaker than the body, which is why I would love to hit it with the flail. Um, we did about bruising, which, um, compared to the first hit with the flail, this is probably better because it also does the, uh, the head armor there. Alright, hit number four. In four hits, we break the body armor. Um, oh no, not quite. It's almost there. 
So four hits, we finally get our first injure, which was really, again, proving the weakness of the body hits right here. And for our second hit with the axe, um, this is looking pretty okay. Not doing a whole lot of HP damage. I think we honestly have done about the same. No, it's about the same with two hits of... Uh, what's that? This past the D... Yeah, I mean, about the same amount of HP damage, but we've broken a lot more of the uh, armor. In fact, we split it between head and body armor there compared to all body armor on the flail. All right, so we can see that's not going to do a whole lot. So let's try another hit uh, and see if we can get the head finally. All right, so first head hit. Um, This is what we're actually looking for. This is, like, valuable. We do about... 20% HP damage, similar to uh, the armor damage there, but we now have proc Headhunters, so let's see what we can do on the second hit. That's going to be more important. Now, with our guaranteed head hit, that's two hits um, against that, and we do about half HP damage. That's not bad. That's a, I'd say that's probably... That's more HP damage than the, um, the axe did in two hits. So that's pretty good. All right, we're now trying with our God Flail. Um, our 42 ignore 30 head hit, which gives us a 55% chance to hit the head. And we're gonna ignore a lot more armor. So here, we proc an injury. Um, and then we're gonna guarantee it next time, assuming we don't get charge stunned. Um, that's a lot of armor damage. More than before, certainly. Nothing else changed on this, right? No. Um, which is interesting that we did a little bit more armor damage than before, but uh, the HP damage is about the same. Let's see. How, let's see what our God Axe does. It's certainly going to be a lot. So what we've done now is, is a little bit better because we've just broken body armor as opposed to done that. All right, we now have our second head hit ready with Executioner. Um, we are going to do a lot of damage. Yep, that, uh, that's a heavy injury right there. That's Crush Windpipe. That's basically a three shot. Um, as long as I can still hit this guy, that would be great. Looks like we might three shot this guy as well, I'm not sure. Yeah, so we're gonna three shot them both. We actually have lower HP on this dude, but this is an easier cleanup, um, because... He's got no body armor, so like the next guy could just hit him in the body and do a whole lot. We did get a heavy wound there as well with a deep abdominal cut. I believe that's a heavy wound. Similar to a crushed windpipe. So these are kind of comparable. Um, again, these are both the max rolls. Although we can see that with the previous one, this build suffers against orc warriors when it doesn't actually proc the head hits. It just like fails. Whereas this build with the axe or you know the mace or the hammer, they're interchangeable are pretty consistent and you don't have to rely on the head hits all right everyone so what is our conclusion from this video right here well i think there's a few of them and i just want to start with headhunter in general you can see like headhunter is pretty actually baller as its own damage perk now you saw with the flail here that it kind of makes this build work without the head hits the flail did absolutely nothing and it was just a bad weapon so you need that headhunter for that but you also saw with uh, the god hammer that it almost one shot a chosen on the head um, and even a normal hammer if you head hit it it'll do a whole lot you'll probably get a lot of injuries if you just replace the flail with any of these weapons and use headhunter now this is, could be its own build executioner crippling strikes headhunter and you just start procking head hits on everybody yeah you've dropped underdog maybe you could drop fearsome for, uh, for underdog and maybe just drop crippling strikes and that and headhunter could just become a new viable perk for damage dealers overall but and specifically with the flail build this flail build is quite viable now do I think it's gonna beat quick hands reach weapon builds no I don't think it will I think those are still better overall but I think the two-handed flail build is actually its own thing and something that you can consider using without feeling like it's just a meme the regular two-handed flail, you know, without any of the uh, the mo the named modifiers, is kind of ass because it just doesn't have the head hit chance to really do anything. Like, it just does nothing on the body. So if you're looking for a good named 
two-handed flail. I think the two stats, well, there's three stats you need. One of them is a plus head hit chance. You need plus head hit chance um, to consistently proc headhunter. So if you have a killer on the run or a juggler, uh, either of those work. But you also probably want brood. So we'll just, you know, wait and see until you get any of those combination of things. Of course, you need melee attackers too. Um, so those backgrounds might not be the best. But onto the other two stats, it's uh, damage and it's armor ignore. So right here we have a regular damage two-handed flail with near max armor ignore, which is 65 to 110, 0, 57. We don't care about the armor damage um, that much. So 0 to 57. This is basically a max roll flail with the normal ignore armor damage. Um, this is... 77 to 133 0 to 53 so 0 to 53 ignore or 0 to 57 ignore but this just does more um hit point damage like raw so i think it's a little bit better on body hits is what i'm guessing but i don't quite know so but i think either one of those two stats is what you need to do because you need to ignore armor to get those injuries and to kind of be effective on your head hits and of course, the head hit chance, I think, is the most important stat of all of them. Um, so in conclusion, I would definitely use this build. Um, I think it's fun. I think it's also pretty good. I will likely start using Headhunter on a lot more of my bros in general, though. And I think you should do that as well. So even if you don't want to use the flail, start using Headhunter. Thank you very much for your time. I found this to be an incredibly rewarding video. In fact, I lost multiple saves by uh, failing to turn off Dovko Rising, as I have for this campaign. So I've lost about two campaigns to make this video. So please, uh, please, you know, show me some kindness. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.